Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. And this is what it says in the Lord's Word. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you are able to test and improve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. I know that God Almighty has always thought things through. He knew me long before my birth and the things that I would do. So why did God not guard that tree from Adam and from Eve? And why did God give us free will and know the web we'd weave? Why did God make Satan so holy and renowned? If God knew all his motives, that day he cast him down. This is only my assumption. God's world is such a mess. God knows what he is doing, but I think he's playing chess. His pawns are angels in battle. The knights will wield his sword. His castles are his righteousness. The bishops serve the Lord. God guards the king with every move as we know Satan's fate God's final move on Satan as Satan in checkmate well, Welcome to our series uh, regarding the walking in the will of God See, this is part one we're going to spend a few uh, weeks regarding this and I wonder however though Are you walking in the will of God this morning? Or are you instead, as many of uh, Terry's poems has pointed out, they are walking in the worlds instead? Do you understand the difference between one and the other? Now, in our religious circles, there's a lot of nonsense talked about the will of God. It tends to be clouded in mysticism, (laughs) theology, surrounded in complexity. That the ordinary Christian, whoever they are, struggles and feels that they'll never comprehend complete reach or understand what the will of God is. Churches can spend years praying and seeking God's will, yet it's simple. It's reachable to all. It's not beyond the veil, it's not beyond our doors. It's amongst us and with us if we just understand what God's will is for us. Paul and the disciples of Christ had instructed us that it is not complex and it should never be out of our reach. For Christ came to make the path smooth and easy for us. Right of our start of our reading it says, I urge you. The word in today's language seems weak or of no importance. That word urge. Yet, the actual word urge itself has a deep and purposeful meaning. To urge means to force, to drive, someone to encourage and to move forward, to move onward, to impel, to entreat earnestly, often and repeatedly, exhorting, advocate earnestly, the doing, consideration of approval of, press, to stimulate, to excite, to improve, to impel to action, effort or speed or to spur onwards. That one word, urge, is all that. It's incredible if you think about it. And that's what Paul has written here in his letter to the Romans. I urge you. And I'm doing that this morning. I am urging you. What Paul is saying to his audience is that He is saying with great impetus, nagged even, repeatedly, that they must pay attention to what is being said. For it is critical, it is important to the well-being of themselves, both spiritually and physically. 
If you want to move forward, if you want to move in the will of God, if you want to develop and grow, please pay attention to what is being said to you because it is vital. It is vital. Using the words of Paul, he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. I urge you, by the mercies of God, listen and act at what God says. But what does God say to you? Terry will tell you when he um, has the inspiration to write his poems. He can be anywhere, doing anything at any time. And generally, it's an inconvenience, isn't it? In a lot of instances, he's painting the fence or uh, do, doing something else. He, he, he now tells me that he has a light on his head because he can receives them at night, and because he doesn't want to put the main light on to read another, uh, to write down another uh, verse, because of course it wakes his uh, his wife up. But God urges us. God desires us to be involved in who and what He is. And it says, I urge you, by the mercies of God, please listen and act out what the word of God says. But what does this word mercy mean? God's mercy is Christ. God sent his son so that your punishment can be deferred or forgotten. You may say, well, I don't deserve punishment. I've done nothing wrong. Don't you recognize that you're a child of Abraham, a descendant of Adam? And you should know that Adam has rebelled against God and that rebellion cost him his place in heaven. That curse of rebellion falls as our inheritance upon our shoulders because as Terry's poem said to us, why didn't God guard the tree? And Adam and Eve took the fruit and consumed it and rebelled against God. Well, once we were rebellious, yet even now, though we are God's children, we are still in rebellion. We have that rebellion in our hearts. This means we must come back to God and ask for his forgiveness so that we might enjoy the mercy of God, who is Christ, so that he can be in our lives. And that we then can might and overcome. As God's child, you see, you need power every day. Every time you allow yourself to be inconvenienced and prompted by the will of God, God will provide his power for you. You see, Paul is urging the Romans and us through the power of Jesus that will be ever present in our, in our lives if we're prepared to be living sacrifices. I wonder if you feel the power of Jesus in your life. Do you have that power? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you feel that he's near, that he's close, that he's close, even for a few moments? Do you feel his presence? Do you feel that power, like, uh, uh, like that static electricity that sometimes you feel the hair is standing upon end, that discharge that fills the room because of his Holy Spirit descends into this world, that he's urging you to be a sacrifice. The trouble is with most sacrifices, they're dead. You can't do a lot with them. Like the money perhaps you've given this morning. The money itself is dead. It needs people with hearts for the Lord to do something exciting, to do something outreaching with it. To do something which will have an impact upon this world. To do something that will maintain this well of righteousness you come and sup from each day. On a Sunday. It needs people to be involved who are willing to make a sacrifice of their time and effort. So that the Lord Jesus Christ's fame will be spread amongst the world. The many or the things that we do in themselves... Don't matter that much. It's it's how willing you are to sacrifice, to be involved in God's work. In the days of the Old and New Testament, the temple was full of blood and death, which was supposedly to be used for the sins of the people so they could be washed away. Instead, because of Jesus, our sins have been totally washed away by him. No more external sacrifices need as long as you've accepted him into your life. 
And that means we're free from the power of sin because he's allowed you to become an overcomer. And if you're prepared to come and allow Christ to have dominion over your life and you're willing to walk in the will of God, then your life can be transformed and you can transform the world around you. I wonder if you know what holy means. Holy means to be set apart, used for and on behalf of God. Now you are God's people, which means that you are a holy people. You have been set aside so that therefore that you can be used as precious vessels in this world. And if we are holy, we must be prepared to set ourselves apart so God can use us for his own purposes rather than our own. We have to be committed and sacrificing ourselves, no matter how young or old that we are, and offer before him as a daily offering. So there we know that he knows that we are available for his use. This means we become pleasing to God. Let's test this. I wonder how much time do you spend in the service of your Saviour who has formed you, who has called you, who has saved you and now, wish, now wishes to bless you so that you might be a blessing to the world? Or is it instead you fill your time with such things as watching the TV, worrying about life and your family and you leave God out of your life altogether so he can never get in and bless you and encourage you and change who and what you are, your family and those who are around you because he knows and sees that you're caring because you're sacrificing your time with him. You know, if you're not even prepared to be inconvenienced, even for 15 minutes, then you're not going to be holy for your, you sacrifice nothing. If you are prepared to be a sacrifice and you've committed yourself, then you are in action. You're working with God and you've set aside your life and time and this means that you are holy. And God because of your living sacrifice is available for you and this is so exciting and powerful terry will tell you i will tell you there's nothing as exciting as being in action and being involved with god and the work that he desires you to do and this can be as simple and as complicated as being available to pray as somebody's asked for this morning to pray for someone and see then see god at work They say, I pray to God, and look what took place, look what happened. And this is what he he desires of all of us, to see how much we have on our hearts, how much we care, how much we cry out to him. As when our children cry out to us, my grandson comes up to me and says, Granddad, can I have so-and-so, so-and-so, please? You know, well, I'm just a sucker for it. Okay, okay, we'll do that. And... Why would it be any different between us and our Father in heaven? But are you willing to be a living sacrifice? You see, God is only ever closer to us when we're in distress. The key here is being acceptable. Are you acceptable to God? Many will say they're not. Well, if that is true, then why did he send his son? You see, you have been chosen, you have been saved, you have been redeemed, you have been set free from who and whence you once were. As we'll talk a little bit about this when we have communion together. God has picked up your sin. He said, okay, then you've come before me. You've turned away from your sin. You've accepted Christ in your life. You know what I do in your sin? I throw it in the deepest ocean and I forget about it. I'm not interested in it anymore. I'm just interested in you because now I can see you. I can be with you. I can have interaction with you. You're acceptable to me. But any, many will say, I'm not. Do not waste your acceptability with false pride and a negative attitude. Because it's all about Christ and what he has done and he has made the way. If you're acceptable, then God can have interaction in your life. And you can be blessed. You see, he wants to be involved in your life. If you're not willing, then you're not acceptable and you have no desire. But if you're willing, you have desire. And you can urge, people can urge you on, you can urge others. 
If you have excitement and expectation and willingness to share your life with him, then he will do the same with you. And he'll say, look at my people. Look at what they're doing. Aren't they fantastic? And they're walking in my will. I wonder if you've been urged this morning. Do you have a sense of of anticipation and excitement that's running through you. For God is here. His spirit is available. And Christ wishes for us to take part in his ministry upon this earth. Are you willing? All you have to do is say yes. And he'll rush into your life. And provide you with even greater opportunities. If you talk to Terry. it will be um, almost 30 years ago now. And you're saying... Would you be getting up in front of people and talking about God through the word that he inspired you? He'd say, don't talk nonsense, he would say. Don't talk nonsense. And that could be the same for many of us. See, God desires to use and be with you and provide you with blessings so that you might be a blessing. Terry's poems have touched so many people. They've gone all over the world. Not for his glory, but for God's glory. And without him, it's unlikely that that would have happened in that way. I don't know if you know right arm Bonke. He's died, unfortunately, now. And he was a great evangelist with millions coming to know the Lord because of how God used him. But this is what God said to him. Do you know you weren't my first choice? You weren't my second choice. You weren't my third. You weren't my fourth. You are my fifth choice. I asked these other people. And they refused. What could God do through you and with you if you just said yes? During our, our time together this morning, we've only taken a few simple steps. A few simple steps in the will of God. The will of God is dependent upon your availability and the fact that you're willing to be holy and acceptable and you're willing to accept your position in Christ. Because it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. You know that you're holy. You know that you've been urged this morning. You know what God's mercy is, who is Christ. But are you willing to be a living sacrifice so that you'll be holy and pleasing to God? You now have the first revelation of the will of God in your life. And you see, it's got nothing to do with religion. It's not shrouded in mystery. Rather, it's all to do with your willingness and understanding your position and status with your relationship with God. And are you willing to prepare to sacrifice yourself for him? this day and for your life to come do you desire to walk with God in his will then all you have to do is offer yourself to him this day for the first time perhaps or renew that time and say Lord Lord use me use my eyes to see through use my ears to hear through use my mouth to speak to use my hands so that you would work through let's say over our coming these coming Sundays will extend our walk with God in his will. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your people this morning and ask that you would...